This week's Break Time With interview is with the wonderful Simon Hepburn, Director of Marketing Advice for Schools. Simon, thank you and thank you for joining us and welcome yep. to our interview series. Great to have you here. Cool, thank you. It's lovely to always talk to people about um, schools and marketing. So I see a lot of your work on social media and a lot of your articles posted, Simon, and I know that you do lots of work around marketing consultancy, training, content creation. Before we begin, can you tell us a little bit about marketing advice for schools and your role there? Sure. I mean, I set it up because um, I was into sort of marketing at the time I was a teacher and I, I, I sort of worked with a lot of um, school marketers. Um, and I, I just, you know, it, it, became, it was quite a lonely profession. I think it's a bad thing to say, but you, you're often by yourself in a school, um, you know, maybe one or two people. And it's, it's across all the different sectors. So independent schools, obviously, traditionally have had lots of people working in marketing, but more and more multi academy trusts now in the state sector have marketing functions and so do big schools. And there are organizations that bring schools together um like amkis who are, who are brilliant um you know but but actually bringing individuals together um mm -hmm. there wasn't there wasn't so much that and again some people you know said they were interested in getting into the into the area into the, the sector and and didn't really know where to start so we we put so a lot of what i do is, is around networking and, and and newsletter and writing and we have lots of events that we used to have face to face and now we have um online recently um yeah. just really to, to to bring people together to talk about the issues um and, and obviously surveys is is, is is a key part of that um as, around that i still teach two days a week um mm -hmm. which is keeps you grounded a little bit um but i also do some training uh, for various people business school business leaders amkis um been contributing to some of their programs um and you know individual training more and more online and and i have a small number of um, schools that I work with one-to-one -one and it's it's really nice to get out and, and spend time with them um, yeah. and you know and, and just sort of try and help them. Wonderful wonderful so you've mentioned there your annual survey mm -hmm. and that was actually one of the first ways that I came across your work Simon um, was looking at the trends that you'd found in the last 12 months in and around school marketing. Mm. What trends did you notice in the last 12 months? Yeah, I mean, we've been running the survey for since, since 2015 um, yeah. with, with various ways. But last last year was obviously obviously really interesting. I mean, and 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 and, and difficult and, and and so on with 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 COVID. But I think it, the big thing really was that, it, that marketing um, and communication in schools came of age. Really, um, mm -hmm. the challenge that schools were facing at all sorts of schools. You know, it wasn't just about recruitment. It was about you know telling parents they. They couldn't come into school to getting getting children engaged in in, in remote learning, um, working with communities to supply you know um, computers and, and and things like that. All sorts of schools got involved in that, um, and you know they had to change. You had to change. You had to, schools had to reinvent themselves, um, and so things like the use of video sort of shot yeah. up. That people you know started creating um, YouTube channels, um, going Facebook Live, you know, all sorts of things that people have talked about for ages, but now had to use and, and, and they see the value of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even things like, um, you know, parents evenings, you know, making them, mm -hmm. them virtual. Um, what you guys do, you know, putting, um, you know, the, the, the admissions thing, people, you know, you had to have virtual open days. You, know, so you had to yeah. have people coming in and seeing, you know, what the school was like from outside. How do you do that when, when you mm -hmm. can't have people coming in? Um, and so, you know, it was it, it was a big step change and i think lots of schools have, have sort of realized that um and, and and in many ways they you know the big thing i would say to them is, is look at what you've done that was different and and see what worked and keep going don't 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 throw it throw everything out you know there's some fantastic fantastic work that people have done but i think yeah. it, it's something that people are going to find difficult because it's not all it's not it's not urgent it's not it's, it's important but it's not urgent if we uh with absolutely that. absolutely i think it's really interesting when a solution comes into play because it's necessary. We have to be virtual, we have to be digital, but yeah. then actually it has some unexpected benefits. Um, lots of schools say to us that by making their communications and their events virtual or digitized, they've been able to have a bigger reach, for example, with their online events. So it's something they want to keep, even, they, even though they can welcome people again face to face. And it fits the various trends. I mean, you know, so many independent schools are seeing applicants from Hong Kong at the minute with the, yeah. the, the people from the UK from Hong Kong. Um, you know, people are beginning to move back around the world as well. And, you know, the idea that you can 
you can get a really good idea of what the school is like without having to visit it. Um, you know, really, really helps. And I and I know all sorts of schools that have that have that have had those inquiries from from overseas. Um, yeah. You know, and at the same time, there will be people who want to go in and and, and do the face to face thing. And, and again, that's probably the marketing challenge that you know you're busy anyway, and suddenly you know you've now got to do the online stuff and you've got to do the offline stuff as well. Um, yeah. and, and part of that is saying to schools, you know. A, see the value, see the value that this is bringing because you you are bringing in bringing in lots of people, um, but also see how much you can you can reuse reuse content. I'm a big big fan of that. You know, um, mm. you know if you're gonna if you're gonna have a talk, head teacher's gonna give a talk in a, an open day, record it. You know, don't don't yeah. waste that. You know, record it and put it out on um, on social media on your website. Um, you know, spend a bit more time maybe preparing it so it's so it's really high quality. Um, yeah. But you know, um, you know, video is 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 much easier to use than it has been um and the other trend that i've seen which is really really good is get is schools they're empowering their students to do it as well um yeah. you know, get them you know i was at the school last week which setting up a school media crew which was just really exciting you know some really engaged um uh, students who are who are going to go around the school and actually tell the story themselves um and that sort of thing is going to be is going to be a way of a way of doing that i think absolutely and i think it's really nice to get the students perspective on what the school is like and what the community is like as well it can be a real selling point can't it it can be and it's also yeah. really eye-opening because you know again talking to these these um students last week you know it's really interesting how much they know of what's happening so mm -hmm. you know we're talking about planning the, the content for um, the, the school for, and and they said you know we need to we, everyone needs to know about the new new reporting how we're going to re um change reports in the school and that one of the teachers like oh how do you know about that you know <laughs> <laughs> because like, they, they do they know about what's going they on they always know, <laughs> they always know what's going on. And, it, and it's a case of saying that that's actually really important to them and their parents and it's a little thing but it's about you know getting something out there that, that will help the parents understand the changes that are happening and at the yeah. same time they were passionate about the the the, the, the ethos of the school and the, and the way that it brought people together and, and you know the really really interesting discussion about you know how do you show that a school cares you know, in 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 video, um, you know, and and then some great ideas about how to interview people and and, and do that. Mm -hmm. it, it's Brilliant. this different level. It's a different level from you know, we've got an open day, come and see us, which yeah. is what happened in the past. Yeah, definitely. So I think then that the rise of video was probably something that wasn't so surprising for schools. They didn't have any other choice but to go down that route. Is there anything that came out of your survey that did surprise you? about schools and their choice of marketing? Um, I think probably the, the um, th there's some little little changes which are around what they're, they're targeting and, and what they're doing. And, and I think, you know, getting um, uh, recruiting students is still is still number one. But I think the one thing that struck this year was about recruiting teachers um, that a lot of schools are saying, oh, well, hang on, we're getting involved for the first time in, um, it was about 13, it's only about 13%, but it was, it was much more than we had before, you know, getting involved yeah. in, in teacher recruitment. And again, you know, We've had this in international schools where people haven't been able to move. You know, there's there's a there's a, there's a shortage of of teachers in some areas and some subjects and some parts mm -hmm. of, of countries. Um, and actually turning that into a marketing, you know, sort of operation rather than a an HR operation where you, you're sort of happy. That's something that it, that we're going to have a look at over time and see if and see if that goes up. Um, and the other the other one was about. Um, you know the, the new challenges for multi-academy trusts um yeah. which you know and, and again this is interesting i didn't see it in the private sector but again private schools are, co are coming together as well you know you've got bigger organizations now how mm -hmm. do you how do you create a brand and, 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 a, and a, um, a communication across that when you're dealing with you know 10 20 30 schools um mm -hmm. and i think that's going to lead to a whole new type of person who works in in school marketing um again because you mm -hmm. know the, the skills are very different um than than um, than the, the working for one school and, and doing everything for one school so yeah absolutely and that might be one of the differences between the independent sector and the state sector and I know that you did survey both mm. are there any comparisons any differences between the two yeah I mean uh, generally I mean I have to say the independent sector um, you know is is the leader in this they tend to have spend mm -hmm. more money the, the, the fundamental they have that they have bigger marketing budgets they have bigger marketing teams and, and what we've seen over time is that they tend to do things first so for example when instagram came up you know it was independent schools that that started mm -hmm. that started looking at instagram and using it particularly for you know initially sixth form recruitment but also now for you know um, talking to parents of different ages um and so on um at state schools you know tended tended to follow with that i think where we've seen state schools do 
different things because they've got less money they they have to be more innovative and so one of the speakers at our last event was um james tucker who works at a school in doncaster mm-hmm. um that's, that's good. he's done an amazing amount of work with facebook live you know more than yeah. i've seen more than i've seen you know private schools do because he's got a small community um he needed to get some some serious messages across obviously in the last year about about covid and about why they were doing things um and you know and so he would jump on on facebook live um you know to, to explain at a very short notice what what was going to happen um the next day and, and why for example they they hadn't closed at particular points but other schools had closed and it's fascinating talking you know and listening to people like that um yeah. you know, who are in touch with their with their communities um so that's that's what i would say you know, is, is learning that way. And certainly the other thing independent schools, you know, should be thinking of is that they are coming together. There are there are more and more mergers. I mean, I've, I've yeah. seen that, we've probably seen that all the time, international groups coming together, you know, prep schools merging with secondary schools and becoming, you know, all through schools um, and so on. Um, and again, when that's happening, um, you know, making sure that you keep the best, the best bits of the individual schools. And that's a debate that I think um, multi-academy trusts are having now. Initially, it was a sort of, or big one size fits all let's just go in and paint everything gray or you know paint everything whatever our color is um yeah and so on and now there's much more thought about how do we keep the different bits um you know sort of um uh working with their communities while getting the benefits of the whole thing yeah Uh, yeah absolutely and i love that example of using facebook live what is your opinion on the future of social media marketing in schools I think it's a really interesting stage we've got to because I think people have, mm. you know, in a way, I, I'd almost say we're past the peak of it. And that, and that may, be, may be sort of something that's controversial. But in the last year, you know, for example, the, the survey showed that independent schools are using Twitter less. And I thought that was quite interesting that Twitter yeah. is quite good at shouting out there. And, you know, with Donald Trump and people like that, you know, get the mm. message out there through Twitter. But actually, not a lot of people use it, you know, in, in mm. you know, um, and so it's useful as a, as a sort of feed into your website and things. Um, but actually, you know, when you do surveys, it, it's not used that much. And so people are moving away from it. Facebook, mm-hmm. I think, brilliant. Facebook, you know, it was the sort of, you know, it was the complete thing. It, I love Facebook events, for example. So you can you can mm-hmm. run an event for a school and, and you can see who's going and you can bring your friends. You know, you can say, oh, go, my friend's going. I'm going to I'll, I'll go along and I'll see her. And it's got yeah. lots of things like that. But But younger people are moving away from that. And Instagram doesn't have those those features you know it doesn't yeah. have you know the community feel of it um so i think people are moving back to it, it's almost part of people sort of moving back to website uh, websites and to personal messaging you know whatsapp mm-hmm. is the key thing yeah you know, and so and that's much more difficult for you know for schools to to sort of influence so uh, that again takes me back i suppose to you know the the, the, the core thing really which is you know in a school it, it's all about storytelling and and mm-hmm. if you get the right story and and let your community know about it they will share it out there and they will share it out there by whatever means but it's actually yeah. a bit more difficult than it was you know than than, than than a few years ago where everybody was on facebook and that was the key thing that you needed to needed to use um, absolutely it, interesting absolutely and you've talked about bringing students into that as well and social media is well there's so many different social media platforms and students will use some more than others how do you think that schools can bring their students on board with what they're putting out on social media? I think I think it's it's again by engaging them. I mean, there's been lots of mm. talk I mean, in the last few weeks about TikTok and and how it's been used badly yeah. by by students to produce you know offensive offensive video. Mm. And, and part of me saying, well, you know, just a bit like you know, you have hackers and, and you and you you employ the hackers for you know to to mm-hmm. um, to to work on work in companies to protect what their own their own internet you know these are people who have got skills they've got you know ability to get out there and share messages and they're using it for the wrong purpose so are there are there children in your school who are really fascinated by this by streaming by gaming you know, all these sort of things that you can actually bring in and, and and say to them look can you make a tiktok with you what, what would a tiktok look like that was selling the school um mm-hmm. and you can work with them and you can obviously absolutely make sure that you know it, it's it's checked and, and so on before you before you send it out you're not going to give them the account and, and go with yeah. it but i think that sort of idea um and that's helping this the students develop the digital skills which they will need anyway yeah. the fact we're, the fact we're doing a video chat you know yeah that, that wouldn't have happened you know um two or two or three years ago and yet when they when they go up when they graduate when they start working you know they're going to be expected to make short videos they're going to be expected to um to, to edit things you know mm-hmm. Really quickly and put it out, you know, 
we're not going to have to wait six months for something. Um, so, so I think giving them those skills and, and looking at that, it's, it's a really exciting, exciting area. And I know, you know, a number of schools that are um, doing some really good work in that area. Um, mm. and, also, and also it's, it's, it's sort of something that, that, that the schools have lost a bit. I mean, when I was at school, um, I was involved in school magazines and school newspapers and it got me really, you know, and it was really exciting. Um, mm. And you don't, you don't see as many now. You, schools still have them. But they're not they're not as big they're not as often they don't do the big magazines um and, and those were skills that sent children on to the jobs in, in journalism you know and, and and so on and we we want sort of you know i'd love to see people you know leave school and be, and be able to be um to, to be broadcast journalists and, and things absolutely like that. You know, absolutely um it would mean coming onto a video like this would be less nerve-wracking um i still get a little anxious every time we do one of these interviews Simon I don't know about you so um absolutely and I love this side sorry no, no, I was saying, saying you, you get more used to it, but you're absolutely right. I mean, you, you know, it, 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 it's, it's like doing webinars and things where you're, you're sitting there and you, you have no, no idea when it, whether anyone's actually listening mm. to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a real skill. Yeah. It's a real skill. And I also love this idea of the shared ownership mm. and of the content that's produced. The students feel like they own it, the school marketing team own it as well, um, and they've collaborated. So absolutely love that idea. Um, one of the things that I'd love to talk about because it was a real surprise for me that it was even mentioned in your survey is the idea of website accessibility. Mm. Now I'd heard a lot of talk around this in higher ed, mm. but I'd never come across it in schools. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, why is that so important, Simon? Well, one of the things we, we sort of, the part, one of the partners we had this time with the survey was, was concept Four, who do, who do web design. Mm -hmm. And it's something that they've, they've, they've sort of been noticing as well. Um, and working internationally, again, I think is, is where it comes up because in America, the, the, um, um, they have very quite strict laws about this and mm -hmm. uh, the Americans with Disability Act, I think it's called. Um, and a lot of what, you know, for example, um, if you put video on a public websites it has to have subtitles for people yeah. who can't hear um and, and again you know that's sort of been a little bit missed out bec because a lot of schools you know are, are sort of rushing around trying to set up websites trying to set up um communication and and you sort of forget sometimes that you know that people who you're trying to talk to you know might have difficulty in in understanding in all sorts of ways um mm -hmm. and it's not just you know um, being able to to hear or see you know sometimes the, the call it the, the the fonts you know the font needs to be accessible yeah um you know all sorts of things need to happen um and again a bit you know with, with a marketing hat on you know the key thing with marketing is always not to lose a, any particular group you know don't mm -hmm. you don't want to lose a, a segment of your of your audience um you know and you don't want to lose a segment because they can't access online just in the same way that you don't want to lose a segment because they can't come and visit because of because of covid so we we, we did that we asked that, that that question and as you said the numbers were, were really quite um quite serious and particularly people not even knowing um what the what the issues were so so people didn't really know um you know what the grades were of yeah. you know, accessibility um you know and and actually when we people were being honest i think 18 I've got the figures here 18 percent said they didn't consider their website to be accessible so they, okay. they straight up went hands up you know we, we haven't we haven't even thought of that so that's a lot of people you know out there to say well actually maybe you just need to go and and do that a lot of people left it to their web designers and said well they must have they must be they must have done this um yeah. again it's you know it is it, it, that important um and you know as you said um 44 weren't sure so again, you know, it's 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 something like that, and, and people didn't check very often. So yeah. I think you know it's an easy thing to do um, to to go out there and and, and um, as I said, look at the um, the, the different um, levels as um, A A A and A A A <laughs> web accessibility guidelines, um, and it's the W C A G okay? yeah. guidelines. So W C A G uh, level A, level A A, and level A A A, and, and you can look them up, or I can send you a link to them. Uh, afterwards um and just 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 check you know what what level you you, you think you are at mm. what level you need to be at um for your particular particular audience you know have a have a think about it and again you know like anything with marketing it does fall into research as well so next time you're doing a survey of of users or parents you know ask them you know do, do you find the website easy to use um yeah. with, with changes to it absolutely do you think that's something that will be changing in the near future for schools I think the problem, and this comes back to something we, that, that comes through the whole point, which is which is schools, you know, school marketing is just such a busy place. I think if you're working mm -hmm. 
in a large organization and you have a team, you have a web team of three or four people, you know, it's something that would be on their agenda all the time. Um, it's, it's difficult, you know, to do these things when you're in a school and you are being pulled around all the time and you've got an event and you've got someone visiting and, um, and you're trying to set up, you know, a, a social media and you're trying to, to mm -hmm. do lots of things. Um, it, so it should be. Um, Brilliant. Okay. So are there any other things then, Simon, that you think will evolve in 2022 and beyond and that school marketers should be more aware of? I think um, these these things are changing. I mean, I, I think the, you know, the, 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 the challenges that are facing school marketers are, are very, very different. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, one of the things that's, that's so important is, is to research and is to do is to look at the environment. You know, it's not. Um, it's nowhere near as easy as it was a few years ago. Um, I'm talking, you know, I work with a few schools in in, in the southeast of London, and you know the impact of Brexit, you know, hasn't even isn't is, is still working through in, in in many ways. You know, and people who you know thought, oh, our school is full, it's fine. You know, these things will change, and it could be positive, it could be negative. I don't want to get into politics of it, but you know, communities are moving, um, things are changing. You know, Hong Kong community moving in. There's a whole need for for much more um, research and monitoring of what's actually happening mm -hmm. around you. We're, we're, things are much more uncertain um, and for state schools as well I mean you know you talk to business managers and and, and they sort of say oh yes there's a new school opening next next door to free schools academy mm. change those sort of things are happening all the time and that affects independent schools as well because people are moving and moving between them yeah um, you know, in the next few years the number of the birth rate in the UK has dropped quite significantly mm -hmm. so again you have primary schools saying we don't understand why there's few people applying it's nothing to do with what you've done it's entirely yeah. to do it's entirely to do with um with the fact there are fewer children around um and 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 so things like that you know even if you are from, I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm so it's one, sorry it's one of those um that even if you're full and um doing a really good job um at the minute you might not be in a few years time um you might need to think about you know strategically changing you know are you going mm -hmm. to be uh, merging or for, you know coming together with other schools should you be looking for that for that sort of idea um yeah. there's a interesting stats about the number of children that are uh, working that are that have gone into home education it's gone up yeah you know 30 30 40 percent wasn't it that that they that people reporting where, where have they come from they've, they've left schools of various sorts um you know and again will that stay you know will we get a, a big homeschooling movement um so i think i think market research is something that you know schools need to try and spend more time um more time on um and you could do that you know, relatively easy um, now using some of the techniques that that, that that have come through COVID, like, you know, doing surveys, you know, online surveys, um, you know, focus groups by Zoom and things like that, you know, just just finding out what's happening in, in the in the community. Um, that's certainly what I'm being asked to do more and more of. Um, and it's quite yeah. interesting. It's a yeah, mm. uh, it is really interesting. One of the things that you and I have talked about, Simon, that I mm. think is really, really interesting and important is that I've been really struck by the different types of guests that have come on to the show. And of those working in schools, it's been really interesting for me to find out more about the backgrounds that they came from, what their careers have been like. And I've noticed that almost all of the school marketers that have come on and talked to us have come from completely different environments. They might have done mar marketing in a publishing back from a publishing background from a financial background hospitality and there's so much good talent within school marketing do you think that we should be doing more as an industry to keep the talent in the education sector yeah i think so i mean my, i started in in the oil oil industry um yeah many years before i became a chemistry teacher but but i think i think this is the bit where getting together and 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 forming these larger organizations or trying to partner with partner together is is going to help because so much i mean i i i there's a few people who i've i've seen over the the last few years who came who are fantastic people who came into the marketing sector came into the school marketing sector and didn't last very long and now you you, you sort of follow you know you, you catch up with them and they're back in back in industry or back in an agency and, yeah. and part of that problem is is is, is that you, you are this jack of all trades you you have to do everything and, and i think schools you know first of all you know the fundamental is that you need to recognize the value of marketing and, and mm -hmm. one of the things i start all the time with is a slide showing you know you, you know the, the actual value of you know just getting two or three new people into your school if you're not full you know that's an that, that's an awful lot of money if you think yeah. they're going to stay for seven years and you're talking you know in, a, in a, an independent school hundreds of thousands of pounds mm. so investing that in somebody to do that properly or a team to do that properly you know to me is a bit of a no-brainer yeah. um 
you know, and, and again, even if you are full to the level that you think you're full, you know, how can you expand? You know, six forms don't really have a limit in most schools. You know, you can mm. take, take on an extra 10 students without, you know, without breaking the, breaking mm. the system. Um, so, you know, unless you are, you know, you know, one of the bigger schools, one of the most successful schools, you, you know, you've got that opportunity to invest in them. And ironically, of course, the, the ones that are big and full do have big marketing teams and do actually keep people. I mean, that's the, yeah. that's the so so making that brave decision to to invest in it, then, you know, training people. And, and I think, you know, the, the, the role of a school marketing director, you know, has to be a, as a coordinator, as a, as a strategic person, you know, rather than trying, you know, trying to think of, you know, then try to run around and do lots of little things. Yeah. So, so they can outsource things like digital marketing. They can outsource event management, and 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 the job becomes to coordinate and run those, you know, rather yeah. than have to do everything themselves. Um, at which point people, you know, get a bit frustrated. Sometimes they get they 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 feel they're not they're not moving on, and then and then they get the chance to move to take that experience and move to a to a larger organisation. Um, mm. You know, and and I think also you know this is where you know the roles of people like Amkis and, and so come in to say you know we we want you know they. You know, do a good job in terms of their new. They've got new um, sort of higher level qualifications, and, and yeah. people are, are, are taking those. So, you know, absolutely, um, you know, people should be using those networks and and, and moving through. Um, yeah, it, it is. A, I mean, it's it's a great job in many ways. It, it's it's you know a lot easier to find all the great stories. Um, mm -hmm. Is that if you're working in the oil industry, where there's, there's yeah, that, you know, so, yeah, yeah, it's definitely a really nice sector to be in. I I find. On that note, do you think that marketing in a school is any different to marketing any other business? Say, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's. I think it's just the key thing is the stories, and and, and you can mm -hmm. find them. So, um, was, you know, I remember being taking somewhere in a school a couple of weeks ago, um, and suddenly we're walking walking around, and suddenly a load of um, the yes, sevens run out um, with with spears and shields and and so on, and they're off to reenact the Battle of Hastings in the playground. Yeah. Um, you know that sort of thing immediately that's exciting that's different that's something that you can use and you can tell if you're working on a factory floor you know you don't get those sort of things you're having to exactly. work really really hard to generate the the stories in fact in schools mm -hmm. one of the challenges is is taking is, is actually cutting things down and one of the things I do a lot with schools is to say you know let's focus on key messages so you know let's have a have a calendar of events coming up and a, a calendar of what you're doing that that, that that minimizes you know the fact that you have to you know have a have a 50 page newsletter every week and and so on but but that's the thing you know you can find this stuff really easily and then it's about about packaging it and sending it out and also you have the the other thing is you have the community so you you have really good relationship with parents you know in most cases and you can talk to them you can you can um give them stuff that they will pass on so this sort of you know the people talk about word of mouth but actually it's about um giving people things that they will then talk about to their friends and their families and so on mm -hmm. um so you know it's really easy to make a big difference that's the other thing yeah. i think about school marketing you, know, you you can come in and you can you can make a big difference to a school in a, in a short period of time um so it's so it's, it's really exciting but as i said the, the schools are, are are that wrong size organization yeah. they're not tiny you know one-man bands where you know you expect to work in a in that sort of environment but they're not huge where you get lots of development it's it's yeah it's, it, it's the problem of being a sort of medium-sized organization really yeah definitely i i think this idea of storytelling and having you know an abundance of really interesting really unique stories to tell is a really nice note to wrap up on simon um if anybody listening to this wants to know a little bit more about marketing advice for schools and your surveys and other bits of work that you do how can they contact you I mean, um, we, we, so it was very, very Ron Seal, the, um, the branding. So marketingadviceforschools.com is, yep. is the site. Uh, my email address is simon at marketingadviceforschools.com. Um, but actually, if you want to look at the survey, the survey's got its own um, website, which is, um, oh, hang on. It's got disappeared off my screen. Uh, let me just <laughs> type it again. That's um, okay. Education survey 2021.co.uk. Uh, um, so you Brilliant. can download the whole survey there and you can actually see the the event that we uh, launched it at and, and, and hear from uh, the likes of, of James Tucker and some other people as well at that. So Perfect. Survey Perfect. We'll link to that in the newsletter part um, that goes alongside this interview, Simon. It's cool. been really, really insightful talking with you today. I really appreciate it. And I know that everybody listening will as well. So just a massive thank you for coming on and being a brilliant guest. No problem. Thank you very much for, for talking. That's great. Thanks, Thanks so much, Simon. We'll okay. talk soon. Okay, bye, Sophie. Bye.